This is The Chris Abraham Show. Welcome to Season 5, Episode 19 uh, from the Chris Abraham, of the Chris Abraham Show, a.k.a. Chris Cast, a.k.a. just me randomly talking into a Sony voice recorder and then running it through some compression and normalization filters on Audacity, Audacity, whatever it's called, the open source audio editing software. I am here at... Uh, beautiful. I'm, I'm sitting in the sun. The sun is getting through all of the fog or the vog or the fire smoke now. It's a beautiful Friday. It is, according to my watchy poo, it is supposedly exactly 72 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm in the sun. I'm on a green wooden picnic table and I'm looking at um, one dude practice pickleball uh, at the Walter Reed Community Center. I guess they're uh, tennis courts but now they've been taken over by pickleball. So if you hear the gentle popping, trigger warning, you're going to hear the gentle popping of uh, wiffle balls hit by Because we're in a rich neighborhood, I assume, by carbon fiber paddles. So, today I talk about my perception of the trans community. Now, this is not going to be as controversial as you think, unless you don't like the process and have a problem with the process, my thinking process. And you want me to think through this in a certain way. Um, I've always been gay friendly. I've uh, grown up in Hawaii. I can honestly say that one of my best friends in uh, 7th through 12th grade, I knew was gay. He came out to me soon after we graduated in my car in Waikiki. And I consider that one of the nicest honors any of my friends could do for me to uh, to come out to me and trust me that way and ever since you know I've uh, I've you know I was a bike courier I spent a lot of time in my 20s in DC went to gay clubs gay discos gay bars Um, I used to take advantage when I was poor used to take advantage of um, of um, uh, girls night at the gay club where young men could get um, half price drinks and cheap drinks. So that was fun. Leverage the system. Anyway, I'm not going to talk about that now. I'm going to talk about trans boys and girls, trans men and women. And, uh, also I guess, uh, non binary people, they and them. I am coming from it. I am pro, I'm extremely pro trans for the main reason that I am extremely libertarian. I believe that anybody can do whatever they want and they also have to pay the consequences, whether they like the outcome eventually or whether they don't like the outcome, right? Uh, When I was in my 20s and the web was in here and I lived on the hill, maybe my 30s even, I told my best friend Mark Harrison that I was going to put up a website called Dress Like Me. And it was to go ahead and tell people who are being oppressed based on uh, the way they dressed and the way they looked and the signifiers they were putting out and, you know, like issues with hoodies and jeans uh, not pulled up and all those other things that Bill Cosby used to talk about. And in general, like any type of signifiers, you know, if you signify 
gang member, if you signify homeless person, if you signify someone who's rich enough to have a watch to steal from, if you signify any kind of anything besides sort of a generic invisible, at that point I didn't know it was called gray manning. Gray man is when you, in, in the context of concealed carry gun owners, being a gray man means that you dress in such a way that does not telegraph to the world that you are in fact armed with deadly response. So don't wear 5.11 gear, don't wear um, uh, blousey vests or blousey shirts, don't wear um, tactical boots, don't wear uh, photographer vests, you know, with lots of pockets, don't wear pouch, um, um, you know, don't wear shorts with pouch pockets, um, cargo shorts, cargo shorts, I guess they're called, or cargo pants, um, don't wear a super tactical looking, like, like inside the waistband supporting type of belt, um, etc. right? Don't look like a private security guy. Don't wear wraparound mirrored shades. Don't wear, um, uh, don't wear tactical baseball caps. Uh, do not wear military inspired kit bags and backpacks and, um, all those other things. Try to look like, if you want to look butch and if you want to look like you can wearing a kind of job that where you can easily carry a concealed carry Glock 19 inside the waistband, dress like, um, general contractor. General contractors can totally dress like capable tactical people. If you look at a lot of private security guys and tier one operators, they kind of dress like general contractors too. General contractors even get away with carrying a giant folding blade in their pocket with the clip showing, right? They, because they are uh, people who work with their hands and need to fix things, general contractors are allowed to carry a lot of deadly weapons just without even carrying a gun like they have reasons to carry multi-tools and knives and sticks and stones and all that other stuff so i always i was going to put together a site that was like dressed like me and at that time i was wearing exclusively uh polo shirts and for those people from great britain who think i'm talking about polo necks i'm talking about like black like lacoste or black or blue or white uh, collared knit cotton shirts. I would always wear a white t-shirt underneath. I would always wear a brown or black leather belt with a buckle. I would always wear jeans or khakis. And I would always wear, in the case with me, I would always wear either, I would always wear Blundstone boots. I've been wearing Blundstone 500s since 1996 so um or you know or i guess you can wear like i wear pegasus shoes like exclusively as running shoes and for everything else i went through a spate where i'd try other things but nike air pegasus is this is i'm wearing a pair of pegasus 38s now so dress like me you know Cinch your belt, wear a belt with jeans or with khakis, wear khaki shorts, don't wear jean shorts, um, uh, etc. Wear digital watches, not Rolexes, even fake Rolexes. You know, wear a, a G-Shock Square or like a Timex Iron Man. You know, general like ways of, of making you invisible. Not look too rich, not look too poor, look like you belong, all that other fun stuff. So... That hasn't changed. I mean, in a world where now um, it is empowering, I remember the only boy crush that I had in um, in like K through 12 was a boy named Love. He lived in uh, Hawaii, and we used to go to the same like new wave clubs. And he was he he had um, 
I think two brothers, it was literally love, peace, and happiness. Like I think love, peace, happy were the name of them. And his name was love. And he hung out with like the Punahou new waivers. Like I hung out with like the Manoa new waivers and the like Honolulu and the HK boys and that kind of deal. And in the middle of that, I think maybe Willow Chang introduced me to him, was this beautiful Howley kid with blonde hair. But the thing that I had such a mad crush about him is that he had the chutzpah to wear eyeliner. And if you like to wear eyeliner, I think I could have gotten away with it when I was a, a pretty boy, like from 16 to 18. I totally could have gotten away with it, but I was too embarrassed. Like I, 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 um, I had a crush on him out of envy, not out of lust. I thought it was so cool. And like nowadays, if I wanted to, I totally could wear eyeliner out to the clubs, right? I could do whatever I want. I even got my first super boring, super, super boring tattoos a few years ago. And they're lame. They're on my upper thighs and... They point towards me in their um, their uh, serif fonted lowercase walk run jog on my left thigh, and um, and uh, and erg row swing on my right. So I'm about that edgy. No earrings, no tongue rings, no nose rings, no other tattoos. Um, but I'm a huge proponent of anybody doing whatever they want to their body. I I am actually pro face tattoos, pro neck tattoos. I believe that if you want to uh, dress any way you want, if you want to what we used to call gender bend, but that's not the term anymore. I guess it's gender fluid. If you want to be nonconformist, if you want to be non-binary, and some days uh, identify with being a man or a woman or a boy or a girl, if you want to um, politicize your uh, being, um, uh, what is the term? Como the, uh, uh, you know, being, uh, what's the term for when a girl like likes doing boy stuff, right? Now, you can't just be a tomboy. You have to be gender fluid or something else. But I even think that transitioning medically by taking hormones or by having a top or bottom surgery is completely enviable because of this. Um, I've talked about this before, I think. I think that immigrants and migrants and illegal immigrants and legal immigrants and legal um, everybody and illegal everybody, I believe that they're all super brave and need to remember that they're super brave and because they're super brave, they're more interesting than everybody else. So every, every undocumented uh, man and woman uh, from Central and South America who lives in America now and you're frustrated with because they take low-end jobs and they pretty much don't care about ever learning to speak English, those people are all more interesting than you are, you know? When I moved to Germany... Uh, Germans who lived in Berlin were a little bit interesting, but I started hanging out with the expats from Ireland and from Romania and from Eastern Europe and Western Europe and Southern Europe and from America and Canada and, and the UK and so forth. And, uh, they were all really cool because they had the chutzpah to be willing to leave their home in the same way that people you meet in New York and San Francisco and Austin and Nashville and Chicago and even Miami are generally more interesting than people that you meet in second, third, fourth uh, tier cities and rural areas because it takes chutzpah to be able to go out of your, to go, to go have a hero's journey. Every single person who decides that they're going to transition to someone who is not just, you know, dressed like me, I'm a girl, dressed like me, I'm a boy, is extremely going on a hero's journey. Now, the ramifications of her hero's journey might just be death, right? Not everybody who's a hero and who's heroic and who's brave and courageous, courageous ends up, um, you know, being 
at the end of the day with happily ever after. If you read a, any hero's journey, they're mostly tumultuous. They're mostly trauma and suffering. They're mostly riddled with loss. They're mostly full of trauma and they most often result in, in death or unhappiness or frustration or, or whatever. So as a rigorous, radical libertarian, I believe that everybody should do exactly what they want um, and they should be willing to in, um, uh, embrace the intended or unintended consequences of their actions, right? So um, if, your, uh, if your gender dysphoric child comes to you and wants to transition to the opposite sex or wants to come out as a third thing or third spirit or other or um, non-binary or gender fluid, uh, your decision there has consequences, right? Your decision, uh, listen, uh, a kid who's following normal uh, norms uh, and normal gender uh, movements and issues with uh, weight and attractiveness and wealth and friendship groups and popularity and rejection and bullying. You don't even have to be uh, trans or gender fluid or whatever to have a terrible middle, middle school, right? It is bad enough just trying to fit in. But if you decide to fit out, there are going to be even more consequences, right? And those consequences, like I say, I was saying, I completely believe as a libertarian, I completely believe that all women should be able to go out into the world, whatever neighborhood they want to, whatever time of day or night, jogging in boy shorts and a jog bra, um, with earphones, with in-ear earbuds in, um, their hair in a ponytail, uh, with or without lights, no matter where. But there might be consequences, not because uh, any woman who decides to do that, or even any man, deserves to get assaulted and killed and disappeared, but because... Um, because things like that happen. You don't have control of the world. And if you do have legal control over the world, litigious control of the world, police control of the world, um, court of public opinion control of the world, cancel control of the world, uh, hearts and mind control of the world, political control of the world, um, civil rights control of the world, um, um, crimes against humanity control the world. None of those things matter until after the crime has been committed. So if you're jumped for being uh, transgender, wearing um, little hair clips and, and um, um, uh, you know, long eyelashes and you're dressed in your prettiest sundress and so forth, there you have every right to be able to go wherever you want. I mean, uh, Southern and Western girls look awesome in, uh, in, in sundresses and like cowboy boots and, and women who, you know, work in the military look so adorable in sundresses and sun hats and like, you know, army boots and, 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 um, and, uh, and, you know, alt girls and new wave girls look awesome in sundresses and, um, and blundstones and, or, uh, um, 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 what do they call Dr. Mart, Doc Martin boots. So cute. And I think you'll look cute too, but like if some jerk who hasn't been arrested yet and might never get arrested and who isn't on social media be canceled and uh, does, you know, does work in a quarry uh, or whatever, if he takes it into his mind to get into his truck and, like, devastate your life, um, the only... If you're willing to sacrifice as a martyr to freedom of choice, which I think is a worthy thing, like, I post every day how dorky I look every day. Like, I look so dorky. 
I rock a, a trucker headset and a dumb, I'm obsessed with boonie hats and I, um, I wear nothing but black t-shirts and nowadays if I'm not wearing black t-shirts and jeans, I'm wearing black t-shirts and just sort of like champion, uh, stretchy cotton sports shorts. Underneath that, I always have on, if I'm riding, I have on um, what's called, a, is it called a bib? It's called a riding bib. It's like um, uh, bike shorts attached to, um, you know, a bib uh, shoulder straps. And if I'm not, if I'm just going to walk, I always wear um, either a J JL Racing or a uh, B B boathouse.com uh what are called unisuits rowing unisuits they're kind of they look a little bit like wrestling singlets or they look a little bit like wwe singlets if you think about old school wrestling singlets uh greco roman wrestling r wrestling singlets that's what they look like they're made for rowing but i think that they that they prevent the thing that i hate mm, I love under boob and I love side boob, but I hate underbelly. And when I see underbelly on boys and girls, when I see underbelly on myself, I the 100% reason, uh, the number one reason why I wear unisuits under all of my clothing is A, to prevent underbelly, B, to prevent uh, inner thigh chafing. So... So I think that like if you I just listened to Megan Kelly yesterday and like here's some reasons why um, why you should or shouldn't uh, decide to transition uh, outside of your natural uh, what is it called when you have um, before you have before you have puberty uh, a lot of people want to get hormone therapy to prevent their, um, their puberty that encourages the, the flow of estrogen or, or testosterone into their system. Now, I didn't know any of this. Like they say that all that stuff can be reversible and I'm super open to being convinced that I'm wrong and that Megan Kelly, who's really anti, uh, childhood transitioning, um, is wrong, which is if you start taking testosterone, if you start taking estrogen or do a hormone block as a boy before your puberty, because you what you feel gender dysphoric and believe that you believe, I don't dis, I don't, I never, I believe anything you tell me. If you are a girl in a boy's body, I believe you. The ramifications of doing pre-puberty um, hormone blockers is that you quite possibly will not develop um, your penis. You might have a micro penis, which is fine if you're going to get uh, bottom surgery. I'm also told that you might not be able to orgasm. You 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 will never be able to make children because apparently it it puts the kibosh, uh, the kibosh on your um, on the production of semen in terms of of your um, uh, sperm production so you become infertile or sterile and um, and so if you decide to transition back you will be uh, sterile and probably have a micro penis and in a world where you might transition back to being a gay man uh, and if you're if you are femme that might work but if you're butch you probably want a semblance of, of a penis that can develop an erection. But this uh, this podcast is not for anybody over under 18 years old. So if you're listening to this, little kids, you are hereby banned from this podcast for being little kids. So I think the same thing or a similar thing happens with women, though I'm not sure. Now, in terms of government support of transition which uh, is called um, uh, child care, child health care, health care for children, health care for boys and girls. I encourage that. But I also think that if women do not want to transition to, uh, to boys, but they're finding that their, um, their extremely, like if they, if they um, have premature puberty at like eight or nine, and they 
completely developed, super young, and by the time they're nine or ten or eleven, are uh, are gifted by God or damned by the devil, um, ex- uh, um, oppressively large um, uh, 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 breasts. I think that there should be um, child care. There should be women health care, girl health care, health care for women to be able to uh, work on a breast reduction. So let's say you, your family line um, gifts you with, you know, uh, double D size E like breasts and you want to be a runner. If you want to be a jumper, you want to be athletic, you want to be join the cross country team, all those kinds of things. I think that the state, if they're going to pay for uh, gender dysphoria um, health care to prevent boys and girls from committing suicide by allowing them to be transitioned from uh, their uh, previous gender to their new gender and sex and gender I'm told are different so their gender to make sure that their physical body is in line with their gender uh, self-understanding of who they are I believe that um, women who have breasts that are too large for them to feel comfortable um, towards their life as if they wanted to, you know, be sporty and so forth. I think that that should be something that they are allowed to do as well. Oh, no, it's starting to get windy. Let me get the see if I can find the muff. I would really like to continue on this. Uh, I have a muff. I have a muff. Where is my muff? I think it's right in here. Uh, Come on. Uh, I don't think I'll find it. Anyway, so here we are. Got it. Okay, guys. Hopefully this will improve things. This is before the muff. And... Here's the dead cat muff. Hopefully that's better. So, um, like, I'm not even coming at this as uh, someone's mom or dad. Like, I, I don't have any kids. I'll never have any kids. I made all of my own selfish decisions, and uh, they've all come to roost. Some of those things, including uh, morbid obesity, obesity, right? That was, that was my decision right? To become morbidly obese, right? My body doesn't naturally want to be morbidly obese. I don't, I've never wanted to identify. Lately, I've started to chide myself and just accept it, but I've lost 50 pounds and I look forward to be able to not be, um, uh, millstoned with, you know, the equivalent of a, like I've lost, the equivalent of a 24 kilo, kilogram kettlebell. So if you're at the gym and you see a 24 kilogram kettlebell, that is my weight, right? So I have a 40 kilogram kettlebell at home and that is the weight that I need to lose. So I've lost 24 and I have 40 kilograms more to go. So I, I and you know what? Old people don't identify with being old. Old people don't identify with being old. I'm really surprised how um, openly uh, young people are willing to identify with being young. Here's a secret for you. You only have 10 good years of being young, right? From 18 to 28, maybe you have 15 good years. If you consider young to be your 30s too, then you've got 20 good years like from 18 to 38 when you're considered young, right? But from 38, 48, 58, 68, 78, for 40 more years, like for twice the amount of time when you've been young, you're going to be middle-aged and old. So realize that all of your choices in life need to have sustainability uh, unless you... And as as a... And I hate to say this because I've recently had friends who've lost loved ones and I've lost my friend's loved one was my loved one and she took her life. And as a libertarian, I believe that that is her free choice. If she was so tortured by demons, goddess bless her. 
But that's not fair, right? Her her action had consequences, in which case she left a 10-year-old daughter and uh, a husband behind. Uh, and a fan base, apparently. She was very influential in her community. So, but I encourage anybody who want to take their own life, you know, I don't begrudge you uh, taking your own life with a gun or or through pills or whatnot. I think it's up to you. I think that those little kids who tell their mom and dad that if they don't get to transition, they're going to kill themselves. I firstly doubt that they'll do that. I feel like uh, little kids uh, tell their parents they hate them. I fucking hate you. And if you don't do this, I'm going to hold my breath till I die pretty willy nilly. But let's say they're like bold. Like, like I said, if you're bold enough to decide to become uh, a, you know, fabulous, like transitioned, non-binary, blue-haired god or goddess uh, with, with, uh, with nose rings and piercings and tattoos and uh, crazy manga contact lenses and, 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 um, and bald heads and spiky heads and, and even uh, uh, mullets and so forth uh, with f- crazy nails and and all that fun stuff. Uh, if you've got your plumage on fleek, I herald you. But realize that that will be constant war. You're going to be in constant war because even when everybody in a school is trying to be as normal as possible, uh, there are still mean girls and there are still cliques and there are still popular girls and there's still pretty girls and popular boys and athletic boys. Um, and even if every place in the world is locked down to make sure that everybody knows that if you ever said anything against your free choices, that person would be destroyed um, and doxxed and everything. There are so many people in this world who have nothing to lose, who are true believers. So if you, as a heterodox, trans activist, Antifa, god or goddess, who are in fact true believers and believe that by any means necessary, we will have a cultural revolution that will result in the most beautiful array of flora and fauna, a fabulous realized um, uh, gender fluid uh, LGBTQIA plus utopia. Just realize that that extremist true believer um, um, what is it? Z- uh, z- z- zealousness that has a, that has an opposite, right? And so the more extreme, uh, zealotry, uh, goes, the more extreme the anti-zealotry goes. So in the not too distant future, like I said, I admire the boldness of immigrants. I admire and admire the boldness of anybody who's come out of their, come out of their closet I admire the boldness. I especially admire the boldness of anybody who lets their freak flag fly in neighborhoods that are not Arlington or D.C. or Maryland or Manhattan or Brooklyn or the uh, Manhattan or Brooklyn or, you know, San Francisco or, you know, um, L.A. or Hollywood or, you know, um, uh, Austin, you know, outside or Miami, like outside of these places, there's still uh, rural, God fearing, do not, you know, like it's not so bad, you know, it's not Taliban burqa repressive, but it's certainly, you know, uh, skirts and dresses underneath the knee, uh, wear panties under your, pa- wear panties in a bra under your dress. Um, uh, you know, and don't put on makeup that makes you look like a whore kind of places. And I'm saying that to both boys and girls, because I think that, uh, boys who put on too much makeup, the South probably thinks they look like a whore too. So I assume anybody who doesn't dress like me, not me now, but me in my thirties, anybody who doesn't dress like me, someone's going to say they look like a whore or a, 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 
um, a clown. That's another thing, a clown. Or a demon, like if you go to places where there's only AM, uh, church radio, and coast to coast, you're definitely going to be called a demon. There's a lot of, like the opposite of true believer, um, uh, trans right community, and cultural, um, cult, the culture war community on the left, um, the more entrenched and ex ensconced uh, that community gets into society or is represented as being in the schools and so forth, the more uh, the extreme right, who are also true believers, will blame everything on demons. So just know that all abortion is a b child blood sacrifice to the demon ball, or, and that all, uh, everybody who, who um, celebrates pride is in fact walking around with a wormwood or a, um, uh, um, uh, what is it called, screw tape inside of them uh, uh, under under either demonic possession or demonic influence. So, as a libertarian, I encourage, um, let's say you are a worshiper of Baal, or you're a worshiper of Lucifer, or you are an atheist, or your new religion is climate change, or all of those other things. I completely support you. Just realize that there are actions and there are reactions, and... Um, all the decisions will have ramifications, right? So if you have bottom surgery and you decide it was the wrong idea and you want to return, or if you get bottom surgery and your plastic surgery inspired penis or vagina don't work, or you um, have previously said that my uh, removal of my removal of my bris, my removal of my foreskin, uh, is is uh, like a clitorectomy. Uh, it is an oppression of me and my natural penis. Then I would say the same thing about uh, the removal of a penis and the installation of a vagina. Like you can't really undo that except with some more um, low technology, right? Various and sundry things and pumps and all that other kind of deal. And also realize that the moment I started getting high blood pressure and the moment all of these other things, uh, the moment I had heart failure, I started needing to get on medicine that I needed, that I need to take for the rest of my life to keep me well. Remember that, um, the moment you get an organ transition, like if you get a new, a new, um, you know, uh, whatever, you get a new liver or a new um, heart, the moment you do that, you need to take anti-rejection drugs for the rest of your life. If you transition, you will need to take hormone drugs for the rest of your life. Let's say you decide to move to another country, or let's say you come on hard times, or let's say this or that. The moment you stop taking hormonal drugs, there is, uh, based on how long it's been, there's a cascade of changes that will happen to you that won't fully revert you to what you were before, especially if you started taking hormonal drugs before uh, your puberty. But all of these things will start to re-engage with you. They'll only take you halfway. You'll probably still be, be a very twinky, a very, you know, twink boy. Uh, if you had, if you were bo uh, a young boy transitioning to being a girl, if you transition to being a boy, you'll probably be forever twink. Um, if you are a boy transitioning to be, uh, if you're a girl transitioning to be a boy, um, you're pro either way, you're probably just going to be totally twinky. You're probably going to be a very, uh, feminine girl or a very feminine boy or maybe a masculine I don't know I don't know how it works but I know that once you decide to to have upper well not upper surgery maybe probably just need lots and lots of antibiotics but if you do like lower surgery um, I don't know how it works probably lots of antibiotics like how do you keep if you're a boy transitioning 
to a vagina? How do you keep that from closing up? Do you have to keep um, the area like very literally like an open wound? Sorry to use that term. It's too evocative. And since I'm an aphant, I don't see that. But I'm warning you, is it an open wound that you need to be worried about infection for the rest of your life? And then, you know, uh, in order to keep um, those hormones where they need to be, you need to take a pill every day and pay for that and be supplied with that. And don't forget about that once or twice a day for the rest of your life. I'm sure they'll come up with patches. I'm sure they'll become with come up with like, you know, auto injection or patches or anything like that in order to keep it more sustainable. But that's something you're committing to, which is adding complexity to your life. And um, if that's something that you need to feel well, and if that's something you need to feel empowered, and if that's something you need to keep from committing suicide or harming yourself or leaving your family or rejecting your community or cutting on yourself or taking drugs and alcohol or medicating yourself with pain or taking risky behaviors that out of self-loathing, then goddess bless you. Taking a pill twice a day is completely what I encourage you to do. But I want you to know that I'm not part of the community. Like I'm an ally, but I encourage your carte blanche. I encourage your encouragement. Oh, and all of these things, most of these things are a kind of eugenics movement, right? If you commit to um, the plastic surgery required to make you an opposite gender, and then you commit to uh, the um, types of things like uh, removing your, um, removing your, as a young person, if you haven't banked away a bunch of your sperm or eggs, um, will you have your um, a hysterectomy or will you have a castration? Will you lose your ability to have children? And, and, and have you taken someone who is fabulously gay, fabulously trans, fabulously alt, fabulously nonconformist, non-binary, gender fluid, etc.? And are you taking those people out of the genetic pool? Is the right wing um, traditional people, are they, have they tricked you into removing your, uh, what they consider to be degeneracy? Um, are you opt in deciding to remove your degeneracy, your genetic mistakes by opt in to, um, taking drugs and having surgeries that make you infertile and sterile is that a kind of a trick way of getting your type of um your particular brand of uh of of you know queerness gayness uh your brand of of um of spectrum uh autism your brand of depression like uh, your brand of of gender dysphoria and euphoria like are all of these things a passive aggressive opt in taking advantage of a cultural movement are these tricks to getting all of your heteronormative flaws you know such as um, your depression, your anxiety, your uh, autism spectrum disorder, your uh, born gay, all of these things. Are, are you, in fact, removing these things from the gene pool in a way that eugenicists would want to, but they've tricked you to do it for them? Is that a sneaky way of convincing you not to do what gay people have done for their entire lives, which is pretend to be straight, have a bunch of kids, come out, divorce their wife, and then have the second half of their life um, uh, as the uh, man, woman, or other that they've always wanted to be. Now, if that doesn't bother you and you believe that the world's going to burn anyway, um, otherwise, make sure that you get your eggs and sperm frozen uh, so that you can give them a big F you. But really, those kinds of things are only important and only accessible unless they become the things the state pays for. These things are only, let's see, is it 
uh, here's a test to figure out whether it's um, eugenics. Is the state willing to cut off your genitals, but not willing to put them back on? Is the state willing to remove your breasts and give you a uh, top surgery, but not put them back on? Huh? Is the, are they willing to give you bottom surgery and remove your, um, your, your uh, testes or your ova uh, from your, uh, from your um, uh, fallopian tubes and from all that other fun stuff from your body, but not give you a way to have the state pay for the freezing of your uh, sperm and eggs? Like if it's a one-way trip and gender and, um, and child care, child health care, is only a way of, 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 of ending uh, genetic lines and not a way of trying to re of trying to give you an opportunity to undo what you did, then it might be eugenics. Like, I know that we live in a cult of, of pro-abortion, pro-choice, but in, a, in, in, in a, an abortion-friendly world, um, are you... Um, listen, I'm... I'm a libertarian completely. I believe that if you want to get the icky thing out of your body, you should be able to. If you consider that uh, that initial uh, zygote, or is it um, uh, what is it a zygote? It is is it a zygote or embryo? If you want to get that embryo out of you because you consider it a cancer and you want autonomy for your woman's body, I completely believe that. But if you are being fooled by the state that having that people like you quote unquote having babies quote unquote is like an elitist plan to uh, make sure that you and yours kind of die out in the end or don't make more of you quote unquote and only make that something that you know rich powerful successful and traditional people are willing to do then you know are you responsible for the own death of people like you are you responsible you know for your own death are you responsible for killing off the lines of people that make you fabulous and make you proud and make you gay lesbian bi lb lgb trans intersex asexual etc right like, I don't even think I had kids because I think that I'm too crazy and I, my parents sucked and I hate them and I'm not going to bring kids into the world because I don't have a natural obsession with them. So I just decided to make choices where that didn't happen. And I don't have kids. And I don't have a family and I won't have grandchildren. I won't have great grandchildren. I don't have a turnkey famille. And uh, that's my decision. C'est moi seulement. Je suis seulement. I don't even know if that's the right way to say it. But it's on you now, right? Like, I think that um, as a libertarian, I think that you should be able to take pills until you die. I believe that you should be able to commit suicide with the gun. I don't include those gun deaths in the gun deaths. I consider suicide to be... Um, a personal choice in the same way that I consider abortion to be a personal choice and um, and transitioning a personal choice. I believe in full autonomy and uh, primacy over oneself, not over anybody else, but over oneself. Uh, amen. So on that note, what do you think? Do you think I'm balking mad? Do you not like my argument? Because like, like, I am, I'm not transphile or I'm not homophiliac, like all those other things. Like, I am interested in, you know, bobbed haired brunette curvy girls, I think is what it comes down to. Like, that's my exclusive fetish, I think. Um, and so, like, you know, I probably wouldn't date anybody who's trans. I probably wouldn't date a boy. No, even I probably wouldn't even date love, even though he's pretty and has beautiful uh, eyeliner. Like, if anything, I would say I'm asexual. I don't know. Like, I'm I'm monkey. Like, all my friends think I'm a technolog tech monk or business monk or capitalist monk. 
I'm kind of monkey, like, you know, like celibate out of choice, I guess, or out of morbid obesity or out of like, I don't know, but that's my choice too. And every action has consequences. I love you. This is season five, episode Neunsen, and I'll talk to you soon. I hope the wind noise wasn't so bad. Ciao. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time. Thank <laughs> you.